Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 5 of our tic-tac-toe AI which we're making on Python. Now in case you've not watched parts 1 to 4, I will leave a card for you right here. So in parts 1 to 4 we did quite a bit of code and in this video we'll be enhancing our AI even further using some danger positions and we'll also be dealing with the tie game end screen because at this moment we only have an end screen if either the player or the computer wins. So let's get right into it. I'm just going to show you a quick preview of what happens when we you know try to creatively defeat our AI and you can see it as follows. So we can play it this way and defeat it you know, the way I did. So there are a lot of danger positions where our computer has to basically sidestep our normal algorithm and make a different move. So I'll call those different positions that could exist danger positions. And what I'll do now is scroll down below to my board. So I have board is equal to something here. And after this, what I'm going to do is copy some of the code um, which I used in the game. I don't want you to be, uh, you know, uh, right, uh, typing out the danger positions one by one. So what I will do is leave a pinned comment below and there you will um, see two parts. So you can copy the first part and paste it and you'd see nine different danger positions. So you have danger position one, two, three and four until nine. Now it's important to note that all of this is going to be exactly like the board and we're going to compare them to the board um, in different occasions. So uh, the idea of leaving the um, the zeroth element uh, vacant is the same as same reason we did it here. Basically, we want the square numbers to match with the numbers which the X's and O's are on the list. So once you have this in place, you can actually scroll back up and uh, you can create a new function. I'm going to do it before check center, but you could do this pretty much anywhere. Now I'll call this function def check danger pause. And uh, in this function, we'll be checking the different danger positions that exist. And we'll basically me, uh, be making a move countering each and every one of them. Uh, what I will do first is add in a few global variables. So the first global variable I'll add is called move. And the second one is comp move. Now I did this for both, oops, not the comp move function. It's just going to be comp move. Uh, now I did this for both the, um, not just both, but all three of these you know, check center, check corner, and check edge functions. And I'm basically going to do it in a very, very similar way. All right, so now you can go ahead and copy the second part of the comment and just paste it once again. So we have nine different if elif statements, and we check if in every single one of them, if board is equal to one of the danger positions, and if it is, we make a separate move. Now this alone is not going to do much. I mean, we could have this function and we could have all the lists set up, but we actually need to make sure we implement this particular function. And I'm going to do this in the comp move function right after winner. So the logic is as follows. So first of all, we'll be checking if we can win the game. And if we can't, we'll be checking if the player can win the game. And if he can, we'll block him. And next we check before we check if the center is vacant in case there's a danger position. So let's put that right away. So I'm going to leave in a couple of spaces and I will say if move here and I will simply put in the check danger pause function. Now once you're done with this, you could test out your code very quickly and I'm going to hit the run key and try to beat the computer the exact same way as I did. So this will take a second to show up and there we go. So I'm going to put uh, try doing the exact same thing. And as you can see, the computer is smart enough to avoid us. Unfortunately, we did not have any end screen there. So let's code that right away. Uh, you can scroll down in your computer move function itself and you can look at this if not statement. So at this point, we're checking if not move. And remember, move is going to be false in case we made a move and move is going to be true in case we didn't make a move. So move is basically the reverse of whether, uh, whether we made a move or not. So basically, in case we're not making a move, we have to assume that the board is basically full. And since we've not discovered a winner, it means that the game is drawn. So what you can do is simply add in an else statement here. And within this else statement, first of all, we want to make sure we update the screen. And after we update, I want to add in a small time lag. To do this, we need the time module. So you can scroll up and after you import by game, you can also import time as um, you can just import time. You don't have to import it as T, although that would make things a little bit faster. So once you're done with that, you can head back to the code where we were earlier. 
and you can add in a time dot sleep. Now within this, you can put in the number of seconds where you want to lag. In this case, I'm going to go ahead with one second. Once we're done with this, we can empty the square group because uh, it's only through the group that our uh, sprites appear on the screen. In case we empty the entire group, um, every time we update the square group, there's nothing going to be happening on the screen. And it's just going to be the tie game, um, the tie game background, which we're going to be seeing. Now, in case you have a much bigger game and it's more than just nine squares, I would recommend you delete each and every one of those uh, sprite objects. Uh, otherwise, they're going to run on the RAM and that could slow your game down. However, this is just a very small program and uh, I'm just going to let them run. It's going to be a pretty minor effect. It's so, okay. Uh, once you're done with this, it's important now to change the background and I'm going to do that right away. So let's say background is equal to and uh, you can add in a p.image.load and we're going to load in the image tie game. You can see that on the left hand uh, side right here. Um, the tie game is just a pretty simple um, background, right? It's just a couple of words. Now you can see a, a greenish line underneath background and that's because it's assuming that background is a local variable. To make sure that background applies to everything beyond this function, we can just add in with the global variable move and this should make sure that error goes away. So I'm going to come back to that part and now next I'll say background is equal to here p.transform.scale and I'm basically scaling the background to fit the stage, um, uh, the stage or basically you know the window. So in this case the image that I'll be scaling is the background and I have to enter in the x and y coordinates so that's going to be width comma height. So width comma height. There we go. So I'm still not sure why the background is still in uh, still in green. Uh, that should go away in uh, in a few seconds. So this is basically the idea. I'm going to turn the background from you know this uh, uh, this plain pink image into the tie game, and we're just going to scale it into size. And that's pretty much it. We're just going to leave it, and this is going to head back into our loop and make sure things work. So let's test this out. Uh, I'm going to hit the run key. And I'm gonna to try to beat the AI and obviously fail. Uh, and once we're done with all of this, you can see that we have a small time lag and we have the background image. Perfect, that's it I'll be doing in this video. We'll be finishing up the entire AI in the next video by adding in a couple of animations to finish things off. Um, so I will see you later on. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.